Well, the crisis of health didn't work. The economic shaking that was passed didn't work. The uh, the wars and rumors of wars and the shaking of nations hasn't worked so far. So what are they going to do next? Well, first and foremost, it is really serious what's going on in the middle of this tremendous disaster with the hurricane in Florida. What is happening beyond that is this sense over this pipeline that was taken out in the, uh, in the ocean from Russia. When you recognize this picture and where this is all at, we've got to begin to pray and use some discernment because there's more than meets the eye to this picture. And I don't know if you realize this, but the pipeline that just uh, went away, so to speak, and it's leaking methane into the air and all the circumstances around that picture, there's a lot more to that than some people might realize. And we need to be really keeping our eye on it. And the reason I say this is because indeed it's going to lead to something else. What I do believe happened is I believe the powers that be in the good old red, white, and blue took action against the hammer and sickle by going over and stopping that as according to what was said by the Manchurian candidate just some time ago. Uh, actually came out and said they would put an end to this. And why is that such a big issue? Well, the issue at hand is if they do this, there can be a retaliation retaliation that takes place and brings some real issues. Let me explain, and I'm trying not to say it too clearly. Uh, first and foremost, I'll go here. Let me just put this on the board for you because this is something we need to pray about and consider. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. Going along, and suddenly, out of nowhere, comes the good old... Red, white, and blue, some not American too. Look at this, and, and it comes here and boom, they stop it. But lo and behold, there was another one just ready to go that was empowered, just on the heels of this. Now this has to do with Okay, this is a scenario here. Now, what is the big issue with this? Well, this is serious because, you know, uh, <laughs> it's so interesting. They talk about how climate change and all the issues that are going on have all this to do with um, all the gases that are going into the atmosphere and destroying things and whatnot. Well, this here is one of the most monumental methane gas leaks in modern history. Done. By the good old red, white, and blue is what we believe. Now, you can't prove it, but when he says, you know, we're going to stop this and we're going to do this, this happens. Now, this is kind of quiet news right now, but this is a major issue. When you talk about watch the small news, watch the small events, this is one of those. Why is this such an event? Because where this is headed is a moment where there could be... Why retaliation? because they took a lot away from this nation right here by this moment, okay? Now, I hope you're picking up on what I'm laying down because it's really serious what this is about. Now, where this could go is, of course, this has to do with um, Scandinavian countries and all this that had a pipeline ready to go already, and that's already been empowered, and they're doing it completely cutting these guys out of the picture. Now, what does this mean? Well, some of the potential issues could be that uh, this... this uh, nation here could retaliate with um, internet and power. Now, I gave a word a while ago um, about how there would be eco-terries. <laughs> By terries, I mean erists. Okay, and so when you're looking at this, you realize that eco terries came along and they're like, you know, we're going to put a stop to some of these things. And I just didn't realize it would be some of the red, white and blue causing this to happen. And so the response from the nation that I have crossed out here could do something. And I'm not saying this will happen, but it could do something where they retaliate this way. And if that were to happen, this would cause real, real 
disaster and difficulty. Now, I believe we can stop this. I believe we can pray against it, just like so many things. And here's a word I want to say to so many people, is when we're looking at all this, you know, we, we put some dates on the board just a few days back. We talked about times and seasons. And you got to understand something about this. Jesus said, he said, how is it that you can read the signs of the weather? He said, you'll say it's this color in the sky, this is happening, and all that, and it's going to be a stormy weather, and all these things are going to take place. He, Jesus said, but you can't read the signs of the times. Jesus said, if you can't do this, you're a hypocrite. He said, hypocrites. If you can't read the signs of the times, you're a hypocrite. If you can read the weather, but not the signs of the times, then you're a hypocrite. <laughs> right? I don't know if I spelled that one right. Praise God, where's Hannah when you need her? Anyway, now look at this. The signs of the times, weather, Jesus said you're a hypocrite if you can't read that. So when we're talking about dates and stuff and all the things that are going on, you know what the big issue is? The big issue is, is what is the Lord saying in this window of time? And so sometimes we put dates as a window and times and people are like, that specific date didn't happen. That date didn't happen. Well, actually a lot is happening all at once. If we would have put something out like this 20 years ago or even 10 years ago to a specific date and you looked at the global events, there's a lot happening. But it's not about date setting. It's about a window of time. And listen to me, nobody should ever set dates, but there are windows. Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, but you need to know the seasons. And he said, if you don't, you're a hypocrite. That's what Jesus said. And he said it regarding um, times and seasons. You can read the signs of the, the weather and the times, but you can't tell what's going on there. Now, let's go into this just a a little further. This is a serious deal um, with Florida. Florida just took a major hurricane, obviously, and we are praying for the people in Florida. And thank God they have a good governor who's standing up and bringing truth to the horizon, bringing truth, not, and not truth, action, leadership. Uh, he's bringing truth in, in leadership by bringing activity and action that's stopping some of this, you know, uh, a tragedy that could have been so much worse. And thank God for him and where this is headed. But I've got to tell you, there's a symphony of distraction going on, and it's terrible, and, and I mean terrible, as this is, you know, it makes you ponder the idea. It makes you ponder the idea if things like uh, this are really real, okay? It really makes you ponder it. Now, do we have conclusive evidence of this? Well, they've shown for years that they can influence weather. That's been something that has been proven, and it's been used, honestly, for uh, two generations, practically, over this. Now, is this really as much as people say it's all cracked up to be? I don't know. But what I do want to say about it is, is there is something going on with this. And when you start to look at all the things leading right up to a, a scenario with midterms and where this is all headed, it's serious stuff. And we got to pay attention to what's actually going on in the culture and in society. Because if we don't, we're going to get, we're going to get swept away in some of this. And I believe clearly, though, that there's things going on now. The good news is Here's what I believe the good news is, is regardless of what's going on in all this picture, I say in Jesus' name, we cancel out the plans of anything that could be uh, from the powers of darkness or uh, uh, elites manipulating things or whatever. What I do believe is, even though they got hit with all this, you know, because I don't know, this is just me, you discern it, okay? Uh, this is not a thus saith the Lord, but please discern this. You know, somebody here had done something to impact Martha's Vineyard, if you remember. They sent a few guests up there to Martha's Vineyard, and they're like, oh, okay, you know what? Uh, go ahead and pull the lever, crank. Go over and, 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 and manipulate the system. You know, you ever see the Dr. Evil when they got the, the one German lady that's, that's screaming, and she's like, pull the lever, right? And, and send, out, send out the hurricane. You know, I don't know, but what I want to say to you is that something was like a, I don't know if it was supernatural, retaliation, whatever, or if it's just simply bad timing. But these things have happened. And we're going to pray for Florida and all the people that have been devastated and impacted 
impacted that are without power right now. Hundreds of thousands and much more are devastated right now. And we've got to be praying for them, and we will in a moment. But let me also say this to you. I still believe that there's going to be, not just from Florida and much of what's going on, I believe there's going to be a midterm surprise and a major turn, okay? And what do I mean by that? I think if all things are equal, which they're not, and they're already finding in the great state of Minnesota, uh, they're already finding that people, uh, they had... I don't even know what to say. They had uh, double the, the voting registration stuff and all this in, in Minnesota, and they, they're busting it, though, which is good, which is good. You know, that doesn't really seem to make the news, but that's good. And you got a lot of people that are like, no, this, you just got to understand this, all the election stuff goes down, and people, you know, they just voted the way they wanted to. I mean, how stupid can people be and still breathe? Do you not know what just happened in our political landscape over the last four years? Do you not know what just happened in the last two years? I just don't understand how people are so inept to look at reality and realize, gee, maybe people did try to run away and cause things to go in a direction through uh, the great puppeteering of what they could do through technology and other things. Stupid. Pay attention to what's going on. Now, now viewers, you're not stupid. You're blessed. But I'm talking about other people that try to run away with things and do stuff that's nefarious and evil. And some people are so wanting to have normal that they do what is called normalcy bias. A normalcy bias means something is so horrible, so terrible, you're looking at it, you see it, and you just can't seem to come to terms with the fact that there's an issue happening. So what you do is say, no, it's still what it's always been. Jim, it's still what it's always been. I'm a moron, not a doctor, Jim, right? You go down that road and you just begin to dumb yourself down because of the, the culture. And it's the, it's the same, it's people who've not had to pay high prices over and over and over again throughout life that sometimes are the most ignorant. And I don't mean that against anybody personally, and I hope, you, you know, certainly not at you. You're brilliant in Jesus' name. But what I want to say to you is this, is that when people are looking at this scenario, especially people in high office or government settings or whatever, there's a normalcy bias with people. And I'm telling you, the culture, the culture sees it and senses it. And that's where you're going to start to see very, very profound leaders on both sides stepping up and standing up. This is the same way that a World War II difficulty came out with the wrong kind of regimes and leadership. And if we don't begin to have principle-based leaders stand up, we're going to get the other thing because people are looking for very strong leaders right now and people that are wishy-washy and complaining, you oh, know, I don't know what to do. And they're full of normalcy bias and they refuse to admit that something's going on. They're going to get swept away and we're either going to get one of two things. We're either going to get horrible leaders like they had and we had to fight against the World War II that caused great, great calamity and, and death, right? Or we're going to get somebody that stands up with horsepower. Either way, collision is coming. So you might as well get on the right side of things because this is where it is. And if you think stuff has not been manipulated, as stuff has not been pushed into a corner, and there's not been something that happened in the last little bit, uh, even with the mainstream um, you know, uh, a cycle of political figures, then you need to really pay attention and check yourself. Now, let's go a little further here, and I want to go into this because this is very, very serious. Now, I believe there's going to be a massive turnover. I think that everybody wants the Manchurian out, even his own crew. Now that they're done using him for their stupid purposes and evil, wicked, antichrist, nefarious agendas, now that they're done uh, pushing the antichrist, mark of the beast, precursor practice serum, which so many people got, and suddenly they're coming out now and saying, oh my goodness, this is really bad for you. Yep, even the people that pushed it are saying, we need a global recall on this serum that we pushed so hard and putting it into children. And all the people that were in places of authority that pushed this agenda, I'm telling you, they should should be held accountable for what they pushed. And I don't care who it is, pastors, leaders, 
politicians, anybody, and anybody that didn't do their homework and they lined up with that commie agenda to get that garbage inside people should really be paying attention to the actual stats that are going on around the world right now. Now, if there's anybody that actually had to do it and you, you made the decision to do it, you did it on free moral agency or you were forced to do it, I want you to know my heart is with you and we have compassion for you and there is in no way any pointing of fingers at individuals that had no choice or had to do it. But here's what I'm talking about. It's the agenda behind the leaders that push this stuff and are still pushing it. How stupid can people be and still breathe and not look at the actual stats that are going on when you got the main people rejecting it and even the puppy killer who is out there, suddenly he's gonna be in hot water because they're gonna have to hang the noose around somebody's neck uh, and give them the blame for it. And they're gonna be like, oh, it was him. And they're gonna do it to, they're gonna do it to the puppy killer guy. I resent that. I resent you would say that to me. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm like the most brilliant guy ever. I'm making lots and lots of money off the death of many, many people. You know what I'm saying? And when puppies are put into this pressurized scenario, I torture them till they don't live anymore. And that's how we find things out. What kind of person is that, right? And if you don't know who I'm talking about, it rhymes with ouchie. And then you recognize also that then we have the Manchurian candidate that they're going to utilize until they're done with them, whichever one it is. I don't know if it's one of the three clones they have marching around or if it's the main guy, but I got to tell you, there's an antichrist spirit working through so much of this. But the good news is this, as darkness rises and pressure comes on the earth, Look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Jesus is coming soon. The King of kings and the Lord of lords and the Almighty God is rising up against this ever-present evil age. And you got to understand something. On a bad day, you're called to be the best there is. Jesus is never going to leave you, and he's never going to forsake you. But we got to look at the signs of the times. we got to understand what's happening in the world right now. Now, there is great strength. There is a sense that here's what the, the, the kingdom of darkness wants to do. It wants to induce poverty onto the United States. It wants to humble America. It wants to bring the U.S. to its knees. And I keep hearing the Lord saying no, no to that. Here's a word God gave me. You want something raw? You want something raw from the word of God today? Let me go here if I could real quick. This is part of my reading today. I was doing some reading in uh I suggest to my team that we do Bible reading every day. If you're watching, team, I'm sure you did yours today. Let's go here. Isaiah chapter 7. I want you to see something. Isaiah chapter 7. I want you to really get a hold of this. Right here. Verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, and all this, king of Israel, um, and Syria, and Pekah, and son of Remaliah, uh, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem. Get this, went up to Jerusalem. Here's the word of the Lord that the Lord gave me today. And I'm praying about this. You discern this, okay? Went up to Jerusalem to make war against it. To make war against Jerusalem, right? But it could not prevail against it. And it was told to the house of David saying, Syria's forces are deployed to Ephraim. So his heart and the heart of his people were moved as the trees of the woods and the wind. And then the Lord said to Isaiah, go out now and meet Ahaz, you and the, the Shear Jeshub, your son, at the end of the aqueduct for the upper pool on the highway to Fuller's Field and say to him, take heed and be quiet. Do not fear or be faint hearted for these two stubs of smoking firebrands for the fierce anger of Rezin and the son of Remilia, because it, it goes on to say, uh, they, they'll go up to Judah and trouble it and they'll make a gap for themselves in the wall and all this, but it shall not. Verse seven, hear me. Uh, Isaiah seven, now I'm in verse seven. Thus says the Lord, it shall not stand. It shall not stand. I heard God say this today to me. It shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and he goes on to say all these things. Here's my point. They circled around to make war against Jerusalem, and the Lord finally spoke back and sent a prophet to the opposition saying, you shall not stand. This will not work. Victory will come. Now, I have to tell you today, man, I'm really fired up. I got to tell you today, and we're going to pray for Florida and all this. Listen, I got to tell you, Hear me. This antichrist agenda, I think, is shocked that we haven't gone down yet. I think they're shocked we haven't gone down yet. This, uh, 
And all the people that play ball with this, it's disgusting. It's disgusting in the church, the government, and the marketplace. They're like, well, you know, we just need to get along. Can't we all just get along? The get along gang message, the pretty, pretty pony message, the pretty, pretty pony simpletons that either preach over the top holiness that no man can keep like Pharisees and Sadducees, or they're gonna preach, hey, hey, it's grace. Do whatever you like, it's fine by God. God is love. Don't read your Bible, don't pray. Just, you know, just drift around on a cloud. And then when all this calamity overcomes you, you'll just be going, where's the love of God? And God's saying, uh, 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 ignorance is not bliss. And I need you to really realize that there's more to this life than floating around going, the love, the love of the Lord. The love of the Lord is wonderful and God is good. Grace has a name. Grace has a name. You know what grace is name is? Grace. <laughs> anyway, praise God. Look at this. And I like that song, by the way. Now, here's what I want to say to you. This Antichrist spirit has been pushing around and being a thug. And trying to intimidate. And I do believe there's going to be... Um, uh, this season here that we're in right now, where we see this decline, we go to this season, and then we come back out again, and we go this way. And I believe this is this. Now, it could come out in 30, 60, or 100-fold, okay? I mean, we could have our, our <laughs> coming back out of darkness. It could be a 30-fold return. It could be a 60-fold return. Or we could get all the way to 100 again and start rocking and rolling. But the issue is, is what will the church do Will there be good uh, leaders? But either way, the young lions will rise up. And they're going to lead this next thing. So right now, the sleeping institution, like our Manchurian Antichrist, you know, special assignment, uh, puppeteered, strings attached, Pinocchio, that we have in office, you know, doing things, uh, you know, the sleeping spirit that's going on is going right now in a 30, 60, and 100 fold capacity. And I believe right now we're somewhere about here about to hit 60. And when we get into this though, there's going to be times where it was dark. This is where we're headed, in Egypt. But I'll tell you what, it was light in Goshen. Somebody say, we're going red today. Shout out, going red. In the name of Jesus, shout out, we're going red. What do I mean by that? I mean, we're going red in the blood of the lamb, the word of his testimony. We overcome the evil one by the blood of the lamb, the word of the testimony, and we do not love our lives even unto the death. The red church is rising, and it means the blood of Jesus. Those who know the blood of the lamb. You know the blood of the lamb. And I'm telling you, we're going to rise up. That's why, man, I'll tell you, that's why we did this. That's why we did the book, Breaking Hell's Economy. It's a prophetic word for now. You can still get that book today, josephz.com. Now look at this. 30, 60, 100 fold is where I think this is going. All this mess that's going on. And I believe this has to do with even now. I think that we're here. Uh, this, this midterm scenario is here. Right? I think we're here. But I think there's going to be this. Now, no matter what happens, I think we're going to begin to see a whole lot go on right in here in 2024. I think the roar will be restored in 24. I believe there's going to be a whole lot of turmoil around this season here. But breaking out of this, I think this is going to be uh, days, weeks, months, years. And I could speculate the years because I have senses about this. But I do believe it's going to take a season to come back. This is going to involve housing, economy, power, influence, and leadership, okay? There's a lot happening around this that we're going to see a resurgence happen, but it's going to be a shaking and a quaking with all this. Now, let me go over here. i got to talk to you. Repost this right now if you can, because God's speaking to people. I believe this. I heard the Lord say in Isaiah 7 uh, that there's going to be many things that come our way, and it will not 
happen. It will not be allowed. Now, there's some things that are already in motion, and it's going to take some great shaking to get us to the point where we can have victory and we can see the fullness of you know, what the Lord's having for people to really live, move, and have its being. Now, God, God is not going to leave you nor forsake you. God's not going to leave you nor forsake you, even though in the middle of all this, we're seeing a crisis go on. The Manchurian comes along, signs a thing, and sends more aid over to uh, this battle that's taking place between the hammer and sickle and that other nation. And so we got to recognize is that God's called you to live, move, and have your being. God has not left you behind. He is not the author of confusion. He is the author of the goodness of the Lord. You know, I know that right now, for example, we're not up on YouTube, but we should be again tomorrow or the next day. We're, we're getting that all sorted out because of just, you know, some wonderful things when people tell you what their rules are because, you know, you say things, right? But I want to say to you today, Jesus is going to make a way of great in, increase for you and breaking out of this system. And there's a supernatural way of doing this. And God's making a way where great strength is coming and great victory is coming. And the light of the Spirit of God is coming. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a massive turnover coming. Hear me. A massive turnover coming. A massive turnover. People are saying, go on Rumble, go on these platforms. We're on all those platforms right now. We're on there. Not, not live, but we are there on Rumble, all of it. You can find me on about 20 different platforms. If you can think of it, we're there. Uh, but let me say to you today, strength is coming for you right in the middle of this crisis scenario. Crisis that doesn't have to exist, but it's being induced. It's being induced. And the Spirit of the Lord is bringing strength to His people, those that have ears to hear. And I know some of the things I say might sound so offensive and all this stuff, but you know what? The way darkness is being is offensive. That's offensive. And it's time that we begin to rise up and recognize the Spirit of God is bringing a great turnover. Now, there's going to be good and bad with this, but a turnover is coming nonetheless. There's going to be strength that begins to rise. I gave a word about women that would stand up in authority and begin to push back against this cultural scenario. The real mothers would, would stand up, both in government and church, the marketplace, all this. You're going to see the women beginning to rise. And you see that in Italy. You saw that stand up. And you see so much of this. Now, I'm not saying all of it's going to be perfect. There might be a mixed bag in some of these arenas. But I've got to tell you, Jesus is making a way. He's making a great way for many of you, many of us. Now, I want to say this to you as clearly as I can today. The Lord's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And to those who are in Florida or any disaster that's happening currently as you're watching this, I speak the peace of God over you. It was just a week ago that I began to talk about, I saw water and, and disastrous uh, hitting of the shorelines and all this. And then, of course, it happened up in Canada. And now we see Florida and there's more to come. And we just need to pray right now. Father, I speak the peace of God over every person that's in Florida and all the people that are without power and children that might be frightened and all the things that are happening. God, I pray wisdom on the government there. We pray peace on the people there that they might not even be able to see this because of the power outages. But Lord, we just pray the peace that passes understanding would guard their hearts and minds. I pray favor. I pray strength over them right now in Jesus' name. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. God's bringing strength to you who are viewing, you who know people there. And God is going to begin to make a way through this scenario. And I believe this is going to be, again, an overreaching of darkness and there will be a response of righteousness. I'm telling you, there's a favor of righteousness that's coming. Hear me. Because of Roe v. Wade being overturned, and people keep forgetting that, and any church that didn't celebrate it, and any leader that calls themselves a Christian that didn't celebrate it, I just got to tell you, I got a problem with that. I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. People that are like, well, you know, it's a complicated issue. Yep. Yeah. The, the loss of millions and millions of babies. Yeah, that's a complicated issue. Now, I'm not against any woman or person who's been a part of that. God loves you. God forgives you. There's nothing but love and Jesus loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. But the continuation of something we can make a difference in is what I have an issue with. It's not about a person or you or anyone. We love you. And you'll find in this ministry, there's more grace for you than you can imagine. More love, more acceptance, all of it. But here's what I want to say to you. There's so many people that 
still just turn their, their head the other way. They look the other way when we should at least be doing whatever we can, where we can, as we can, which includes celebrating when there's a victory. And churches that are like, well, I don't know about that one. You know what would impact them is if their bank account was empty. Then they might start talking. We, we, need to do a, we need to do a finance drive. We need to get this worked out, all that stuff. But you know, what about all, it's just, isn't that kind of backwards? Does that seem backwards to you? It seems backwards to me. But I want to say to you, Jesus is absolutely bringing strength to you today. He's bringing strength to you. And now I sense powerfully a great turn coming. The turn is coming. Because the United States has stood up, they've done right, at least on a national level, by the children. And I know there's many more things that we need to be uncovering, which includes, you know, uh, trafficking and all this garbage that's going on and the pervy stuff that these wicked individuals are doing and allowing and are participating in. You know, it's a perverse generation. They're allowing this kind of perversion into the culture. But that's why we're here. That's why we're here to stand up against this stuff, to push back against the wickedness, to begin to right size, because the next generation is worth it. It's worth it to God. It's worth it to Jesus. And I'll tell you, when you begin to stand up for something, I'm telling you, God will begin to bring strength and he'll empower it. I encourage you to join the fight here. I encourage you to partner with us. We're going to go after this generation. We're going to go after it. Praise God. And uh, there's great strength happening. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. If, if you're a partner, we love you. And from the bottom of our heart, we cannot thank you enough because we are helping a lot of folks, a lot of people. We're supporting people. We're doing what God's called us to do. But if you want to partner, you go to josephz.com or you can text the keyword give. Join the fight and send us. Send us out. And I'm not against people. Please hear me. If, if somebody has been a part of, uh, you know, a, a unborn narrative or they've, you know, done that, hey, God loves you. You got to hear me. Jesus loves you, and God's not condemning you. Uh, repent, turn, and if you're well past that, God, God looks at you as pure, holy, clean, forgiven. There's a lot of people that have done a lot of terrible things, but that's why we have Jesus. That's why we have Jesus. And if you receive Jesus on this broadcast, here's what's going to happen. We will send you free teaching. Just tell us about it. Email us at josephz.com, and we'll send you free teaching called Saved, Rescued for a Purpose. And we'll get that information to you. It's about eight hours of teaching that will encourage you and our partners to make that available for free for you. Praise God. Well, I encourage you to go ahead and do that today. Share this video everywhere you can. Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you for being here. We've got a lot more to keep going with. And remember, we're not against people. We're against ideologies that hurt people. Even if people that are for those ideologies, I'm not against people. Even when I talk about the Manchurian and all these people, I'm not against them. I'm against the spirit working through them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of wickedness in high places. And we pray. So, Father, I bless those who are watching today. I bless the people of God. I speak strength and great favor on you. The increase of God is on your life. The blessing of the Lord is on you. Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And God's going to make a great way where the light shines in darkness. Get ready. Buckle up. We're in that window of transition, and we're going to see some wild things take place. Jesus is Lord, and he loves you. Well, I love you. Nobody's told you today. Please share this. Repost it. Check out these announcements. I have so much more I want to give you, but I'm telling you, I think, uh, I think we did pretty good today. A lot of information coming at you. So please share this. Somebody needs to hear it today. And of course, download the Joseph Z app. We're getting thousands of views now per video on the app alone. And I'm so grateful to those of you that do that. Download it at your favorite app store because like uh, YouTube or some of those places where they say, uh, hold up, pause, whatever, we can't be there. I want to tell you, we will be on that app. And if we're never anywhere else, we'll be on that app and we'll be broadcasting casting and there'll be updates every day on that app for you. So I encourage you to check it out, josephz.com. Uh, you can see that. And then also, I just thank you so much. Partners, we love you. Thank you. And I will see you all again very soon. Check out these announcements and I'll see you again soon. I love you all. God bless you. Well, I am so glad you joined us today. 
You know, we have a lot happening in this ministry, and it's because of monthly partners that helps us continue reaching people by the millions. Currently, we have a project, and it's called the Diamond Air 62 Project. Affectionately, we call it the Red Eagle One Campaign. This aircraft can take up to seven people. We can travel anywhere in the nation, and as mandates get stricter and the times get more and more difficult, we believe we will have our own ability to travel and be a blessing to people all over at no cost to them. I encourage you to become a partner today. You can do that by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. If you partner today, you're gonna to find that there is a great partner care in our ministry that'll reach out to you. They will love you. Different team members will be contacting you. They'll pray with you. They will prophesy to you. They're just gonna love on you. And I gotta tell you, our partner care is wonderful. These guys love you and they're looking forward to talking to you. Another thing I want to say to you is please consider signing up for our email list. You want to sign up so we can stay in contact because we're building new platforms all the time. If the social media becomes more stringent or difficult or maybe you just can't find us, if you sign up for our email list, it'll be a tremendous blessing for you and for us and we can stay in touch and you can find where we are all the time. Thank you so much for watching today. Jesus is Lord and I want to say a great thank you to the partners and friends of this ministry. Together, I think we can change the world.